And in the same way, for 450 years, black people were kicked out of seminaries, we were kicked out of communities, we were lynched, we were hung, we had entire families taken away. Reconcile, what we do? That's why racial reconciliation does not have a strong narrative in the black church. All right, so I was talking about racial disparities and just saying that we have some unique differences in our country when it comes to race, the quality of life between black and brown people and white people. Now, what's the story we tell? When you hear, man, a lot of problems in education in areas of black and brown people, how do you answer that question? What's the story you tell? Well, I think we have storytellers. And I think we have four storytellers in our country. I want to introduce you to them. Great people, except for one of them. The first one, none of us like. His name is Racist. Interesting individual. Racist, what he thinks, or she, believes that black people at core are inferior. Their culture is inferior. And the reason why they can never get themselves collectively out of bad situations is because their culture is debased and, that, and, and as a people, they'll never achieve because it's part of their DNA, right? Now, we would say that these people have a theological problem because they don't see people made in the image of God. They don't value them. Man, those racist people. Problem is, racists never call themselves racist. You ever notice that? You ever notice, like, when people get caught doing racist things, the first thing they say is, but I'm not a racist? Like, it doesn't really matter what goes before the end, the tagline will be, but I'm not a racist. And you see them in group chats and you see them on videos and they have to be caught. And so essentially everybody who we say is a racist never says that they're racist. Mind you, slaveholders said they weren't racist. Okay, so hold on to that thought. So racists have to be caught. They never say they're racist, but we know they're around. They do things that are demeaning to black people, jokes, whatever. So that's what they say. The story of America is black people just don't, can't get it together because it's who they are. But the, pe the person that I think is probably in the forefront, um, pretty much a lot of our elected officials are, are this way, are the racially indifferent. Racially indifferent people say things like, I, I, don't, I don't see color. I see people as as people. In fact, I, I, you know, when, when I see black people, I just think of names. I don't, I don't get into all that. So, so I don't like using terms like Black Lives Matter. I mean, why does it have to be a black entertainment television? Why, why does it have to be a Black History Month? I mean, we, we kind of just keep bringing up culture and ethnicity. Why don't we do this? Why don't we just be like Americans and get all that out of the way? Racially indifferent people are tired of black people asking for rights. They're tired of these marches. What they're, and they, ooh, and they love Donald Trump because he tells it like it is. He treats people as people. In fact, racially indifferent people and racists, they kind of hang out together. You know, the racists, they never say they're racist, but the racially indifferent people sometimes sound, they, racists say stuff like racially indifferent people say. They're hard to tell, you gotta catch them so you don't know who is who, but, but racially indifferent people, they love telling it like it is. They think black people just need tough love. That's what they need. They just need, they just need to stop all these welfare handouts. They just need to get it together. So racially indifferent people wanna move race aside and they just want people to be people. But then there's the racial reconciler. And this is pretty much where the church has brought itself to over the last 30 to 40 years. Um, if you look back uh, several years ago, there was a guy named Bill McCartney. He was a football coach uh, with Colorado and he started this movement called Promise Keepers. And in Promise Keepers, there would be this black and white, people would come together and they would sing, you know, all these different songs and they'd cry and there'd be a speaker up there talking about unity, talking about oneness, talking about harmony, talking about we gotta see each other the way that God made us and everybody would leave out of there crying and you'd hug that black man you'd never hug and you'd, you'd high five that white guy and it would be wonderful, incredible pictures. They take lots of stock photos from that stuff. So that was really nice. 
But the implicit understanding of people who only think about racial reconciliation is we need to come together and be in community. And in a lot of ways, what they're saying is we need to invite black people into our churches, into our seminaries. We need to give scholarships. We need, because what, what's missing is black people are missing out on opportunity. If they only had opportunity, the world would change. Now, the interesting thing is the racial reconciler is not necessarily trying to deconstruct what's happening in the ghetto, what's happening in black and brown places, but what they are trying to do is they're trying to invite them into their space. I want to note that black churches never talk about racial reconciliation. Ah, they do sometimes, but for the most part, they don't talk about racial reconciliation. In a lot of ways, racial reconciliation is a narrative that our white brothers and sisters have created in order to make us feel more harmonious together and in community. Now, before I get to this last part, let me just tell you the biggest flaw in racial reconciliation. So, so maybe a way to understand it is, let's say one night I get into an argument with my wife and I kick her out the house and one hour goes by and two hours goes by, and three hours, then all of a sudden it's 40 hours. We're getting close to two days. My wife is knocking on the door, and so I start to feel bad. So for five hours, I open the door and talk to her, but I close it. I open the door and talk to her, but I close it. I open the door and I talk to her, but I close it. Five more hours of that. At this point, my wife is banging on the door. She's frustrated. After 45 hours, almost two days, I let my wife in. She comes upstairs. And while we're sitting there, I say to her, I think we need to be reconciled. She was like, reconciled? You need to apologize. Like, you keep putting us on equal footing. Like, you kicked me out. I need to hear from you why all this time now you've come to this place of wanting to reconcile with me. And in the same way, for 450 years, Black people were kicked out of seminaries, we were kicked out of communities, we were lynched, we were hung, we had entire families taken away. Reconcile, what we do? That's why racial reconciliation does not have the strong narrative in the black church. So the racial reconciler, as beautiful as they make that story sound, at the end of the day, it doesn't have the longevity in the black community. All right, the last person I want to tell you about is the anti-racist. Now, I know that's a new phrase for a lot of people, but the anti-racist, what they do is they consider people's humanity and poor choices and all that. But at the end of the day, they, the minute they see a disparity, they think to themselves, there, this has to not only be based upon human failings, this is probably also based upon systems and structures. So then you begin to investigate the system or structure you investigate policy, you think about history. And so the anti-racist knows the history of the country. The anti-racist understands policy in its community. The anti-racist, particularly the Christian anti-racist, looks at those given policies and we pray against strongholds in communities. The anti-racist is not just leading a march, holding hands, wearing kente cloth. The anti-racist, has decided they want to dismantle structures and they have committed themselves to that work. And there we have the racist, the racially indifferent, the racial reconciler, and the anti-racist.